Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and we'll talk about third party app stores and side loading this week. Also iPhone 16, Apple card, and much more. This is your weekly Apple news update for the week of December 3rd, 2023. Now this week, Apple shared a couple different ads on their Apple website and YouTube channel. And as you can see here, it says iPhone 15 album cover. It's highlighting the feature where you can take a photo with your iPhone 15 pro and pro max. It recognizes depth information. Then you can change the focus point after you've taken the photo. Additionally, this really great feature they introduced with iOS 17 called personal voice. That's actually something they were highlighting in this really sort of heartwarming film or short film about the lost voice. So that's something that's available now and under accessibility. If you haven't seen personal voice, definitely check it out as it allows you to speak using your phone, recording your own voice. It takes a while and 150 phrases to record it, but it's something that's definitely worth trying out if your phone supports it. Apple card had some big news this week with Goldman Sachs, no longer going to support the actual Apple card itself. This will be in about 12 to 15 months. And the partnership is going to end according to the wall street journal. And some recent news from Mark Gurman suggests Apple could maybe switch to chase bank instead. This will take a while and all of the different things apparently aren't beneficial for Goldman Sachs. So they want to drop out of the overall experience. Maybe Apple's not happy with how they're offering service and much more. We don't really know the details, but either way, it looks like the bank bank holder behind Apple wallet may be changing next year to go along with Apple card news. Apple has a new web page tapping into holiday savings where it shows you can enjoy exclusive offers when you shop online with Apple pay now through December 13th from different companies such as banter, where you can get 40% off jewelry priced at $50 or more with a promo code champion, chewy Columbia, and many more. So if you're planning to shop at any of these stores, you may be able to get an additional discount with an Apple card there. Much of Apple's chips are made outside of the USA, but some of them will soon be produced and packaged here in the USA. Apple announced that Amcor will package some of the new chips being built by TSMC in Arizona on their website. You'll see on Apple newsroom. It says Apple announces expanded partnership with Amcor for device silicon packaging in the U S. So if you want to read about this, I'll link it in the description, but it shows there different investments there as well. Apple uses the arm architecture in their chips as well and licenses that from arm. According to the information, Apple is paying them less than 30 cents per chip in royalties. Now keep in mind, Apple did negotiate this with them, but does have some leverage here. Apple recently signed a deal even further into the future though. And so I'm sure this is being negotiated on both halves, but arm isn't making as much as many people thought, but they're still making plenty of money off it. So some people have said that they're not making enough, but that's for arm to actually decide and determine what would be best for them going forward as Apple's using that architecture. The UK is now investigating Apple's browser and cloud gaming due to restrictions put in place to stop competition and hold back innovations. This also applies to Google where both companies are under antitrust investigations. Now this sort of goes along with Apple having to open up its operating system where Google is apparently working on a Chrome browser that does not use WebKit and instead uses its own code. Currently on iOS, if you're using Chrome, you're still using the back structure of Safari or WebKit, which is basically the browser integration within iOS. Everyone has to use it, whether that's Chrome, Firefox, or anything else. It's just a skinned version on iOS that will soon change probably. And maybe some of this antitrust investigation will go away as that's something that wouldn't make sense if it's opened up that way. But either way, they're under investigation for that. Apple also has to comply with EU ruling saying that third party app stores will have to be allowed on iOS. And the latest news comes from Microsoft, which is apparently working on gaming based app stores or a gaming based app store, probably to go along with the Xbox. And this is according to Bloomberg. It makes a lot of sense if they have to open it up and allow for third party app stores that Xbox would have their own store there along with set app that we heard about back in August where they're making a third party app store. So I think we'll see more of this where we'll have a secure app store within iOS, but still has to comply with some rules. Apple has been promoting Taylor Swift quite a bit. And on Apple's newsroom, you can see Taylor Swift is Apple's music artist of the year. And now there's an era's experience that's being brought to New York on December 8th and 9th. So that's something that's available if you're in New York where you'll be able to experience that I'll link it in the description if you want more information. Apple has long supported product red with some portion of the profit going to the global fund to support AIDS. Apple highlighted their product red products on December 1st and also said that from December 1st to December 4th, 
all proceeds from in-store app purchases in three popular games in the app store will be donated to the global fund. So you can see some of those here where we have EA sports FC mobile along with gardenscapes and others. Additionally, any purchase made with Apple pay at the Apple store, apple.com or Apple store app, Apple will actually donate $1 for every purchase up to a total of 1 million. Also the Apple watch and product red can be ordered until the 21st of December to arrive in time for Christmas. So you can see all of the information here. I wish they would bring back a product red iPhone where we would have that like we have in previous years. So let me know if you'd like to see a red version of the iPhone 15 pro or any of them really. That's something I really miss and wish they would bring back. We have it in the SE, but not the other phones. If you use Steam on the Mac, Steam is ending support for 32-bit games and Mac OS Mojave early next year, according to the support post on the Steam website. They're shutting that down. It will still be available for 64-bit and other games, but just not 32-bit and Mac OS Mojave. So if you're using that, unfortunately, you'll have to upgrade in the future. Now, as far as weekly deals, there are still some deals on things such as AirPods Pro 2, but they're not as good as what they were before. Before, we actually had them down to $189. Now, they're still cheaper, but not as much as they were off before. Additionally, MacBook Air 2 is still on discount, along with MacBook Pro, iPads, and much more. I'll link those in the description if you want to check them out for yourself as well. Now, if you're someone that regularly uses Zoom and you have an Apple TV, Zoom is now available on the Apple TV 4K. So if you want to use it along with a camera or you want to use continuity camera with your iPhone, you'll be able to do that. As far as releases this week, we can expect iOS 17.2 RC. That's what we had this week last year with iOS 16.2. So it makes a lot of sense that probably tomorrow or maybe Wednesday we would have that update. That means we would have a final release of iOS 17.2 to the public, probably around the 11th to the 13th. Last year it was the 13th, but I think it will probably be around Monday like it normally is. After that, we'll have iOS 17.3 beta one, and we probably won't see beta two until the second week of January last week or last year, rather we saw it on the 10th and we'll probably see some sort of consistent release at this point next year as well. So we should have some more features with that. iOS 17.2 does bring quite a few features though. Apple's been working on a 5g modem for some time. They bought Intel's patents to try and figure that out and apparently has discontinued its current development on the chip according to the neighbor blog. However, in this weekend's power on newsletter by Mark Gurman, he says Apple is instead focused on 6G chips instead, which maybe it would make more sense to get it ready by then. You can also see a job posting that was listed recently for modem system software architect that's available on Apple's careers website, and you'll see it's available posted November 17th. So that's something they're looking for. It makes sense that maybe if they can't get the 5G modem up and running in time, that they could get it ready for the 6G modem and sort of switch away from Qualcomm at that point. Additionally, iPhone 16 Pro and 16 Pro Max aren't expected to get huge updates next year as iOS 18 is going to be the focus on features supposedly. However, there are some things to know and additional information. We only have 10 months left and Apple starts to ramp up getting the production line ready and much more. So it makes sense that they're going to have to start ordering parts and getting things ready to go. We know that it will have a larger display, 6.9 inches and 6.3 on the smaller model, and not just an action button this time around, but apparently a capture button as well. The action button is said to be upgraded to a capacitive touch button with feedback. And this is something that was apparently planned for iPhone 15, but was delayed, but that button should come to all iPhone 16 models. Of course, internally, we'll get an A18 Pro probably, and we don't know if the A17 Pro will be used in the 15 or 16 models later on, but we just know that A18 Pro will be in the Pro models. It should have an improved thermal design, and the camera improvements with the 5x telephoto zoom lens will be coming to the regular Pro models as well, but there's also rumored to be a 48 megapixel ultra wide that will be coming as well, so there'll be some upgrades to the camera module itself. We'll get upgraded 5G and then also Wi-Fi 7 support apparently. So all of those things apparently are coming to iPhone 16 and are in place to be produced very soon. Now, Apple Vision Pro is something we've been waiting for for a little while. We know that it's going to launch early next year, probably around January to March, and Apple's hard at work on the next version already. According to DigiTimes, Apple is working on a total of four different second gen headsets. This could maybe be a pro or a non-pro with new features, designs, and more. Additionally, Interface News reports that Apple is contacting suppliers already to work on the second and third gen versions of the headset. So there's multiple sources saying that 
Apple's actually working on a couple years out. Apple typically works on iPhones about three years out, maybe even more. So that makes sense that they're already working on the next gen versions of the Apple headset. One other thing I wanted to mention is the mouse that you either love or hate. Most people don't seem to like it. The magic mouse is now updated with a new patent for force touch. The force touch patent that was originally on the MacBooks has been brought to the magic mouse. So that's something maybe we'd see a redesign. Maybe it would be more ergonomic. I'm one of the few people that finds it very comfortable. Despite me having very large hands, I find it very easy to use, but I know most people don't really like it. So let me know your thoughts about it in the comments below, but either way, they definitely need to move the lightning cable, switch it to USB-C and move it maybe to the front so you can use it while charging or something like that. Either way, I think it needs some sort of redesign. That's everything for the news this week. We'll see things sort of slow down a little bit as we get closer to Christmas and New Year's, and then usually ramp back up with the second week of January where we have CES, usually iOS 17.3 beta 2 and things like that. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to cover in the weekly Apple news updates. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below, and I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.